Hi, Chris Keller here again with Pinnacle Training Consulting System. So I'm down in here on a little map to discuss and show you how to look at a client's um, uh, QL. When I say QL is their muscle length. Remember, it's the 12th rib, the iliac crest. And in a second, I'm going to have my colleague come in, um, Laura, to demonstrate. But I want to show you with the spine. So when you're over in side bending, you can see how it, it opens up the spine pretty nicely. So when someone has Tightness is one way you can stretch it is just this way only and then in the future I'll also show you different ways of stretching the QL which are really nice besides sideline I personally like kneeling uh, in, a, in a figure four or a four position because they make it really nicely So I'm gonna have my uh, colleague um, work on over and lie down for me, please She's gonna lie down right here on her side. So she's gonna kind of face towards me And what you're gonna do is you have your client lie face down uh, on her side and basically in straight um, kind of line arrow. Hip needs to be aligned with knee and ankle, and shoulder is basically as well as in line. So everything's a straight, nice line. And what you want the client to do is actively reach overhead with their arm and their leg pointing away from different directions. So in other words, they're pointing their toe towards this wall, and she's gonna reach toward the wall with her uh, hand, okay? So I want her to do that. Go ahead and do that for me, okay? And then relax. Okay, now she can relax her arm down. So you can see how much movement she did and then we can do that on the other side. Now that's the active assessment. The passive assessment is you're gonna take your hands and then you get client's consent, uh, the consent with your client, which I think is really important. And I say that out there to the male trainers and vice versa that from a world of, that we live in, it's very important to get consent when you're touching a client, especially a female client, you need to make sure that this is professional, and most importantly, what is your intention? So I've talked to Laura, she understands what I'm trying to do, that there's no problems. There's no other kind of issues that everything's cool, copacetic. Now, from a passive point of view, you push your left hand on the iliac crest, which again is right about here. My right hand is looking on the top of that 12th rib. I'm not poking her, I'm not crossing her, I'm not grabbing her, I'm just softly palpating. And what I'm looking to do is I'm putting my left elbow on her left, um, this is her left uh, hip, and my right elbow on a little bit on the delta region. And I'm gonna lean and I'm going to move passively the spine and the muscle. So I'm pulling opposite direction out the way and then back in. So I'm feeling how much excursion moves from here to here. And she actually has pretty good movement. So I'm not feeling much movement or limitation. So that's really good. So, so the first is active. Second, you're gonna do is passive once you get your consent. And from there, you can kind of see does the QL eliminating or problem of this client's movement pattern. And from there, you can kind of do a pattern where to stretch this muscle or start strengthening. I'm gonna ask Laura to, thanks, Neil, Laura, thanks for helping me out. So when we go back to, again, the spine, the other thing we wanna look at within the spine uh, in, in the manual, which is something really important, is Punjabi. Punjabi was a researcher, I believe he was a biochemist uh, or biomechanist, that looked at there's three components within movement. There's the neural component, which is the brain. So the brain says, listen, I want to move. That connection from the nervous system goes down in the musculoskeletal system. There's the active system, which is muscles. Muscles facilitate movement. So when I flex my spine, you're gonna get lengthening of the muscles here, you're gonna get shortening of the abdominal wall. Then you have the passive system. Passive systems are the bones. So that would be the vertebra, or inside here. And the shoulder would be the humerus. Or we're talking about the hip, it would be the femur, right? And we're talking about the ankle, it would be some of the ankle bones. So understanding that movement is a process that's connected by three systems, neural, active, as well as passive, okay? And lastly, again, I just want to read about the, uh, the four horsemen again, the four primary muscles of the lower back. We talked earlier, we talk about the uh, obliques coming in from this angle, which provides support on the lateral aspect. They deal with rotation and support. You've got your transverse abdominis. Remember, is classic in injuries such as low back is usually going to be weaker and shut off that the client is going to have an inability to, to contract even after post therapy they may have. On the back side, multifidus. Multifidus again goes from the tailbone all the way up to the spine. And then the QL, quadricemborum. 
which goes from the 12th rib and attaches on the iliac crest. Remember, these are your five, four primary muscles. There's 29 muscles that go around the pelvic girdle. And it's not necessary, I think, to really understand every single muscle of those 29. The more you can understand, the better. But if you understand those four primary muscles of the front and of the back, knowing that there's usually weakness in the interior of the front, tightness of the back, you have an idea of where to start with your clients. With their movement patterns, which we'll talk about in a few minutes in the next section, you can start to see putting all this anatomy together with functional anatomy and biomechanics to how the movement is normal versus abnormal. We'll be talking about that in the next section. Look forward to talking with you then.